Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. For today we're checking out a 1999 McKenna 57 Pilot House. At the time of shooting this video, she was up for sale in Jacksonville, Florida for $329,500. This one's got such an impressive presence to her. She measures in at 62 foot in length. She's got a beam of around 15 and a half feet and a maximum draft of just over 4 feet. And this one comes with a very strong history showing that it's been well maintained since day one. From 1999 until 2016 she was maintained in fresh water during summer months and heaty dry storage during the winter months. The current owners purchased the boat in 2019 and since then this boat's enjoyed cruising up and down the intercoastal as well as travelling over to the Bahamas. This one's had extensive upgrades over the past couple of years, everything from new water maker upgraded air conditioning units, upgraded galley, and an upgraded solar control panel. Boarding's easily done thanks to this extended bathing platform. And in the port side you'll see we've actually got a boarding ladder in here if you're into swimming and snorkeling. The deck's also presented in excellent condition. There's no signs of any chips or rough edges or anything like that. And it's just a few short steps on either side takes you up to the aft cockpit. And here we've got freestanding cockpit table and chairs. You can easily put these down an extended bathing platform if you were an anchor. You've got a fully equipped outdoor grilling station. And this area benefits from having a bimini canopy cover, which is also easily retractable if you wanted to. To starboard you've got the steps that lead up to the flybridge, but you can actually access the flybridge far easier on the inside at the helm. We've got storage lockers to both the port and starboard quarter. And then although you can technically walk to the bow, this one takes full advantage of that beam for the accommodation and it's far easier to access the bow from the helm. There's a tremendous amount of safety equipment on board and that includes the EPIRB mounted up here. And then when you do make your way out from the helm, you'll see that there's a retractable section in the guardrail that you can use for boarding. And you've then got plenty of clear deck space that you always feel safe whenever you're walking up to the bow. And there's a clever design on both the port and starboard side where you've actually got a locker built into the coach roof. This is a great spot to keep your bow lines. You can also use this for the canopy cover that's over the seating that's in place. And as I make my way to the bow, you'll notice that we've got the fender baskets mounted on the guardrail. These are always great for keeping the fenders stored out of the way. And then at the bow, we've got an electric windlass that can be operated at the bow itself, as well as at the flybridge and the lower helm. This one also benefits from having a deck wash system up here. And then as I pan the camera around, you'll see that large sun pad that's currently covered up, as well as a flybridge and hardtop. And then when we step into the saloon, I love the amount of headroom you have. It's got an open plan design with the saloon galley and the pilot house. Those windows give plenty of natural light, but most of them actually open so you get ventilation as well. There's plenty of seating for your family and friends to join you on board. You'll also notice there's storage lockers and cabinets and drawers everywhere in this yacht. Storage has obviously been a key feature of the design. And on the starboard side where we've got that cockpit table, this one folds out. You can expand the leafs on it. But this one also drops down so you can convert this seating area into an extra double berth if you need to. And I like the way that those leafs fold in or out. That way you can expand it when you want to use it. But it also takes up less room whenever you're, you're trying to walk by. For entertainment, you've also got a large TV mounted on the side of where the galley is. And then you also see here we've got a dedicated wine cooler. And as to the galley itself, I love this open plan design. You do not feel claustrophobic standing in here at all. There's a great amount of countertop space, especially these days when everybody likes using their George Foremans and air fryers and things like that. you got your three burner ceramic cooktop. you then got a convection microwave oven. We've then got a fridge down below that's got an ice box. We've got a double sink. And again, just pay attention to the amount of storage options that we have here, as well as how much light we have, both natural and artificial. We've got a trash compactor mounted in here. And then we've got a recently installed fridge freezer with a two drawer system, making us the perfect boat for cruising or liveaboard use. And then as we make our way towards the pilot house, I really like the woodwork that's on this one. 
I'm not personally a fan of dark wood colours. It always makes the boat feel a lot more smaller than it is. But you'd swear walking through this you were on a 70, 80 foot yacht rather than one that's closer to 60 foot. And as we make our way up to the pilot house, this one's got one of the best lower helm stations I've featured on the channel to date. The helm sits in a raised position but sits dead centre. You've then got plenty of seating for your family and friends to join you around that cockpit table. But that table also drops down so you can turn this into an extra berth, not only for guests, but this would be a great watch berth. And the helm's got all the instrumentation you could ever need. And this is referred to as a pilot house, and when you see all the control panels overhead, it makes you think you're in a pilot of an aircraft rather than pilot of a boat. But all these toggle switches are so well labelled and accessible that you quickly easily understand what you're working with. And although the pilot house is obviously fully air conditioned, you do also have a large hatch overhead if you want additional fresh air and ventilation. So in terms of electronics, you've got your traditional clock and barometer. You've then got your Raytheon fish finder, Raytheon tri-data. I've got an autopilot system. We've got the VHF radio, and this has got AIS built into it as well. A Garmin multifunction display, and this also includes cameras. You've then got the full engine instrumentation, your throttle and bow thruster controls, and then another control panel down below. And you can see just how solid that door is that we went out to lead to the forward section. And then I really like how accessible the flybridge is, or it's only a few short steps up, which I'll show you later on. And next to the helm is where you're going to find the passageway that leads down to the lower accommodation. This is well illuminated, there's also a handhold that leads all the way down. The steps are easy to manage as well. And the custom artwork gives this one a nice touch. It also helps keep that nautical theme. And even as we make our way forward to the VIP stateroom, headroom is not an issue on this one at all. And the VIP stateroom consists of a queen size berth to the port side. Again, we're keeping those light, bright colours for all the woodwork. And for a boat that's over 20 years, look at the condition of the panel and on the ceiling. No signs of leaks, no signs of anything sagging or tears. You've got an opening porthole on the side, as well as an opening hatch overhead, so there's plenty of fresh air if you need it. And if I lift this roller blind, you'll see we've got a flat screen TV. There's also a DVD player in here. And for a guest stateroom, this one offers a lot of storage. You've got a locker space down here on the starboard side. This is all cedar lined. And as with most of the drawers and cabinets etc this has all got that push button lock mechanism that way the doors don't open whenever the boat's underway but if i close the door over that leads into this stateroom you'll see we've got this massive hanging locker space but look how deep it is we even have shelves behind the rack itself and even something as simple as having little hooks in place to keep the doors in position again this was designed for on all weather crews and as we start to head aft down the passageway, you'll see that this one has got full laundry facilities. It's got both the washer and the dryer tucked away behind these roller doors. And this one does have solar panels, water maker and generator, so you can pretty much use these utilities anytime you want. And I personally loved working for the past few years from home due to all the COVID requirements. But this would have been a perfect work from home setup. And notice all those folders and documents that come with the yacht. All the history, all the maintenance, all the service manuals, they're all included. This boat is easily ready for sea trial, survey and any inspection. And opposite is where you're going to find a guest heads compartment. For a boat of this size, it's quite a large guest heads compartment. There's plenty of room to actually use the toilet and the shower. I like the fact that the toilet and shower are both separate. There's plenty of storage for your toiletries and personal belongings, opening porthole for ventilation. And that shower's actually got a little bench seat molded into the fiberglass as well. And then as we make our way aft again down the passageway, that's what leads into the owner's stateroom. And this one's got a queen size island berth with storage underneath the bed itself. I've got nightstands on either side, plenty of hanging locker space. You got a TV and DVD player mounted up high. And this vanity station also doubles up as a desk as well. 
and with all the storage options we have, not just in this stateroom but throughout the entire yacht, you can easily make this a full time liveaboard use. And again, you can see we've got more safety apparatus in here. This one really does just need your personal belongings top up the galley, top up the tanks, and head on out. And as with all the other areas throughout the yacht that I've shown you so far, look at the woodwork. There's no stains, there's no damage, there's no, no signs of this yacht being the age that it is. And if I close the door over that leads into the heads compartment, you'll see that there's even more storage options behind here too. And then speaking of heads compartment, again this one has got a very spacious heads on offer. The toilet and the shower separate again. The large portholes and the mirrors, that helps make this feel even brighter and larger than it is. And this shower compartment's actually got a little bathtub in it, giving you plenty of options for relaxation. And then if we make our way back up to the pilot house, I'll take you up to the flybridge. Now personally speaking, if this was my yacht, I would do most of the cruising from the flybridge. The flybridge has got a custom frame hardtop, but it's got the full enclosure. And you can open this up, you can keep it enclosed, or you can open it in sections. We've got a thousand pound davit up here for the launch and retrieval of that sports tender. Look at how clear the canopy covers are. Normally you start to see all these have hazing throughout, but not in this case. Plenty of seating options up here for your friends and family to join you. There's storage underneath most of the seats you see here, but that middle section, that actually lifts out of the way, and that way you can walk straight through to control the crane and get on that tender. And for entertainment, family and friends, this one's got a wet bar up here that includes a Uline refrigerator, and it's even got a Uline ice maker too. We've got more storage underneath the helm seat. I like the fact that there's two seats at the helm. I always think of this as a husband and wife team. And then at the helm itself, you're going to see almost all the same instrumentation that we've got down below. You've obviously got your full engine controls. you got the compass right in front of the wheel. you got your Garmin multifunction display, which again has got the cameras built into it. You've got controls here for the anchor windlass, as well as the trim tabs. You get a cigarette charging socket. These are great for charging up mobile devices, including cell phones. And then we've also got the Garmin Autopilot. We've got the Icon VHF radio, and again, this has got the AIS built into it. Next to that is the Raymarine Tridata. And then we've got the Fusion Stereo System. And then in this storage box, we've also got a USB connection. And that large hatch that we have that leads into the pilot house, you can lock that in place, either open or closed, so it always feels very safe and secure. And finally, if we head to the aft cockpit, there's a large lazarette here. I like how easy accessible the lazarette is, that way you can keep plenty of things down here for storage. And down here you're going to see we've got things like a cable master for the shore power. We've got a 20 kilowatt Onan generator. Not sure if you picked this up on the camera, but it's roughly 3200 hours. You then see all the plumbing we've got for different compressors and water maker. And then we've got a really thick soundproofing door that leads straight into the engine compartment. And then here you're going to find a pair of Cummins. These are 8.3 litre diesel engines. They're around 450 horsepower each, and they're sitting just under 3200 hours on the clock. I should give you a cruising speed somewhere around 14-15 knots and it'll probably top out somewhere close to around 20 knots. We've got 270 gallons of fresh water, we get 850 gallons of fuel. And throughout the entire engine compartment I was impressed with how clean everything was, how dry everything was and also how much labelling and diagrams has went into the service and maintenance of the engines. Everything is so clearly labelled you instantly know what you're touching, what you're switching on, switching off. And it just gives you this sense that there's a lot of care has went into the maintenance of this yacht throughout the years. And while I'd obviously recommend an inspection, sea trial and survey, there's no obvious sign to any leaks of any sort, whether that's fuel, whether that's oil, whether that's water. Everything looks so well maintained down here. And as part of the upgrades that took place recently, all the house batteries have been replaced. New hot water heater. There's a 3000 watt inverter was replaced and she's now presented ready for inspection. This is the first time I've ever been on board a McKenna yacht but this one certainly set the bar high. I'd love to get on board more. 
I'd like to thank Mark for the opportunity to come on board, check this one out and share the video with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.